Hello and welcome to the SNOMED CT research webinar. I'm Susie Roy. I'm the Customer Relations Manager for the Americas and the Research Engagement Lead at SNOMED International and as always the host for the SNOMED CT research webinars. Uh, you'll notice that everyone is currently muted. If you have any questions as we go along, uh, please enter your questions into the Q&A box and we will have a portion at the end of the presentation where we will answer everyone's questions. Um, this webinar is being recorded and um, just know that the video and the slides will be made available later this week and I'll make sure that all of you have the link to all of that. Again, this is the SNOMED CT research webinar. This webinar is actually a part of a SNOMED CT web series, uh, which have become immensely popular events. In addition to this research track, we also have a clinical and an implementation track. These other webinars are uh, more focused on clinical implementation of SNOMED CT, where our research webinars are mo more focused um, in, or more have a uh, spirit of research aspect to it. The webinars are always free of charge and you just need to register and you can attend live or you can watch the recordings later. You can visit snomed.org slash web dash series to see upcoming presentations for each of these tracks. Uh, just to let you know that we have an upcoming clinical webinar scheduled for the 22nd of April starting at 12 UTC. We just held an implementation webinar the previous week. Um, if you missed that, or of course any of our other webinars uh, in the past year, you can actually go to our SNOMED International YouTube channel. So to find that, you just go to YouTube and uh, search for SNOMED International, and you can see all of our videos, uh, not just our web series videos, but also um, our past SNOMED uh, Expo from last year or any of our SNOMED CT value series. I would definitely check out our YouTube channel and like and subscribe. And just to pique your interest for next month's research webinar, Professor Rachel Richardson from the Department of Learning Health Sciences at the University of Michigan uh, will present her recent work, Using SNOMED CT Relationships for Data Exploration and Discovery in Rare Diseases, an example in urea cycle disorders. Um, I hope you're able to join us on the 28th of April at 17 UTC. Should be a good one. Um, and of course, if you'd like to be notified of upcoming research related news and events, you can join our SNOMED CT research reference group. I typically email this group maybe three times a month. Um, so it's uh, not a heavy burden on your inbox. Um, I just let you know of any upcoming SNOMED CT research uh, events and news. Uh, to join, you just need to email me sro at snomed.org and I'll get you on that list. And one last little plug that I wanted to announce today, uh, the, we have a call for abstracts for our annual SNOMED CT Expo. Um, for those who are new to the SNOMED community, welcome. Um, but uh, just to let you know that we have an annual SNOMED CT Expo in October every year where you, our community, showcase current work on SNOMED CT. Uh, we're actually currently planning a hybrid event, so presentations are hopefully um, possible in person or virtual. But because the uh, we are, you know, planning for a hybrid, uh, we highly encourage all of you to submit to present either a paper or a poster presentation. Uh, fingers crossed for that in person, but definitely we'll have uh, virtual sessions where you can present. Uh, we are actually currently offering weekly prize drawings. Uh, for those who submit. So um, I highly encourage you to submit early because your chances in getting a prize are even higher early on. Uh, if you have any questions or uh, to learn more, you can go to snowmedexpo.org or if you have any questions, go ahead and email me and I'll, I'll definitely help you out. Okay, and so now for the main event. Uh, Hugo Van Mens is a PhD candidate at the Amsterdam Public Health Research Institute, Department of Medical Informatics, Amsterdam University Medical Center, Center at the University of Amsterdam. Hugo carries out research on patient access to medical records, semantic interoperability, and medical terminology systems. He is also a developer working on Care Portal, a, the web application layer of HIAX, a 
fully integrated healthcare information system for specialized care, nursing homes, pharmacies, primary care, social care, and mental care. Today, Hugo will be presenting Utilizing the SNOMED CT Hierarchy to Generate Patient-Friendly Clarifications, Challenges, and Opportunities. And with that, I'll send the screen over to you, Hugo. Thank you, Susie. So let me share my screen. Um, can you see my slides? Yes. All right. Um, so thank you all for attending. Um, I will first tell you some background about patient access to electronic health records and how um, the patient-friendly extension of SNOMED City Netherlands can help. Um, and then I'll present um, a generalization method that we developed um, and some results from a validation study. Um, and finally, I will conclude with some uh, further future research. So imagine a patient uh, reading in his record that uh, his abduction um, is going well, uh, but he wasn't uh, sure that he wasn't kidnapped by any aliens. And then his doctor tells him he will visit him with his cow, which um, seems um, even more strange when he would tells him that he he, get, he will need his uh, PET scan and um, that he will give him uh, a cabbage, uh, which is just another um, acronym for coronary artery bypass graft. Um, and this all after having a positive result, this shows that um, medical language can be rather confusing, um, but access to health records by patients is um, associated with more efficiency because patients can um, schedule online appointments, they can do secure messaging, and they can uh, fill out questionnaires, but they can also um, get a um, view their own medical data. So this will this enables them to, to understand better what is going on and prepare their appointments, which enables them to be more involved. Um, and that's why this is also stimulated by subsidies and also it's a legal requirement in some countries like uh, a recent federal rule uh, about open notes in America um, concluded. But also in the Netherlands, we have an um, acceleration program to exchange data between patients and professionals. So uh, all hospitals and healthcare institutions have to be able to um, share their data with patients. Uh, however, these data are registered by clinicians um, for their uh, own record and to, to support the clinical process. It contains um, a lot of medical jargon, uh, acronyms and abbreviations, but also spelling errors and typos in the free text. Um, and it's quite formal. And in the Dutch language, uh, especially the Greek and Latin um, terms are more unfamiliar to people than in other languages, such as Spanish, that are derived from Latin. Additionally, most patients have no medical background, and in the Netherlands, about one third to half of the people have a low health literacy. So they have trouble to understand medical information, but they also have a difficulty in using it for their own ben benefit to their health and to their well-being. And especially certain groups have uh, trouble issues with this, like those with disabilities or low education, but also the elderly and children and non-native speakers. And you can imagine that a recently diagnosed patient is less familiar with the language used around his medical uh, issues than a chronic patient that has already been living with his condition for uh, many years. So we, we have to look into how we can help patients understand their medical data if this is of uh, use to them. And luckily in the Netherlands, um, our National Release Center at NICTIS, the National ICT Institute, 
released a Netherlands patient-friendly extension of SNOMED CT. And here you can see the SNOMED browser that uh, we have here uh, from, from NICTIS. And there, for one concept, there can be several dis descriptions. So you have the American uh, description, but also the Dutch one. And um, the description with the green palm on the, in the middle here is the patient-friendly description. And it also has a text definition that further clarifies the meaning of this concept. And the extension currently has over thousands of um, these patient-friendly terms and definitions. So this enables us to um, that a um, clinician can register in his own language. So he would register, or she would register malignant neoplasm of stomach. And the GP can use his code system as well. So in the ICPC in Netherlands would be malignancy stomach. And then the patient can have the patient friendly version of this, um, this term. And this is um, being enabled by SNOMED CT. So uh, Nick this uh, shared the slide with me. So, and um, so what we did is what we looked into, can we use these patient friendly descriptions to clarify the 25,000 diagnoses that are registered in the Netherlands. So in the Netherlands, we use the diagnosed thesaurus and this uh, com cerebral contusion is an example with a diagnosed thesaurus ID, but there are 25,000 of these diagnoses, at least at the um, time, which was um, April 2020 version. Um, and they are mapped to 18 and a half thousand SNOMED CT concepts. So in, in SNOMED CT, this would be a contusion of cerebrum. Um, the, not all the diagnoses have been mapped yet, but the, it's a continuous uh, process. So we expect um, most of them to be mapped, many more nowadays as well. But uh, patient-friendly extension enables us to provide a patient-friendly term for this, which would be something like bruise of the brain. So in Dutch, hersenknusing. And um, well, if, if other languages would do this as well, we would be able to uh, provide it to people who speak a different language too. And additionally to the synonym, there are some of the concepts that have um, a text definition. So it can be used to further clarify the meaning. Um, but as you can see there, at the time, there were only 700 synonyms that were also part of uh, the diagnosed thesaurus. So we could only explain 3.8% of diagnosis. And um, so we, we looked into how we could increase this number. So for example, pneumonia, viral infection, and disorder of cardiovascular system all have a patient-friendly term. And we, we wanted to use the SNOMED hierarchy to um, to increase the content coverage. So, um, for example, um, cardiomyopathy caused by SARS-CoV-2 can be explained as a viral infection and heart muscle disease by generalizing it to the concepts viral infection and cardiomyopathy. And of course, you don't have to also say that it's a heart disease and cardiovascular system. So you use the nearest concept in the hierarchy. Uh, similarly, there are many other terms where you can do this, like a pneumonia caused by SARS-CoV-2, um, which is a viral infection and lung inflammation. In Dutch, lung inflammation is the patient-friendly term for pneumonia. And um, um, but this all depends on the available concepts in the patient-friendly extension. So you can imagine that nowadays everyone knows too much about, uh, get a bit tired about uh, all the coronavirus news, but you could also explain this as a coronavirus infection, but you, this would automatically be possible if you would add this to the patient-friendly extension and use this approach. Or maybe even COVID-19, it's, it's a very common term nowadays. Some countries, they talk about it like COVID-19 as well. 
in everyday language. So, so we developed um, some software. It's uh, basically a rule-based system where with some text concatenation, um, and it we can use it to import the diagnosed thesaurus and SNOMED CT, and it supports all previous versions of the terminologies. So you can, because it imports the full release, so you can go back into older editions of SNOMED and see how the concepts look like and how they would be explained back then. It has some browsing and searching functionality and you can export the clarifications and some statistics to import it again in the other system, but you can also implement it as an API. Because it's uh, built on an ASP.NET Core web API, um, so practically C sharp, and we used a Neo4j graph database. So the algorithm works as follows. Uh, clarification um, that we generate consists of a synonym, if available, and some supertypes. So sepsis at the time was uh, clarified as blood poisoning and the type of infection. And some of the supertypes have definitions. So in the case of angiosarcoma of liver, you could provide the supertype liver cancer and the definition of angiosarcoma. Uh, we use the transitive closure to generalize concepts uh, to supertypes. Transitive closure table contains all subtypes and supertypes. So for instance, infective pneumonia is a pneumonia and pneumonia is a pneumonitis and so on. Uh, but this table is not available in SNOMED CT and you have to generate it for every version. So in the graph database, this is, uh, you can easily traverse the graph to, to um, find the subtype supertype relationships without having to generate this huge table. And furthermore, we, we re what we did some processing with the text. So we removed some redundant supertypes like I showed before, like uh, aortic valve this stenosis can be explained as a heart valve disorder. But you don't have to say that it is a heart disease as well and a disorder of cardio cardiovascular system. So we leave those supertypes of supertypes out of the clarification. And uh, we also removed some of the supertypes and synonyms that are already contained in the medical term. For instance, aneurysm of heart has as a aneurysm as a supertype but it doesn't make sense to say so because that's uh, redundant. So you only provide the definition of aneurysm in this case. So our problem was um, to find out how we could increase the content coverage um, of the patient-friendly extension by generalizing, generalizing diagnosis to supertype concepts with patient-friendly terms and definitions. So we want to explain these 18,000 and a half, 18 and a half thousand diagnoses that only have 700 synonyms. And these are the results. So I will, as you can see, you, we have um, 10,000 10, diagnoses that can be explained with a single supertype. So uh, for instance, factor X deficiency is a type of blood clotting disorder. Uh, and there are 531 supertypes that we used to clarify those 10,000 diagnoses this way. Similarly, you can clarify 5,000 of the diagnoses um, with uh, 1,404 combinations of two supertypes, so, such as the arachnoid cyst of pituitary, which is a type of cerebral cyst and hormonal disorder, apparently. And this goes up to combinations of seven supertypes. So ataxia telangiectasia is an inborn and hereditary disease of heart and veins, brains, skin, immune system, and spinal cord. So in total, we, um, we potentially can clarify 16,000 diagnoses um, using only 600 20 supertypes that make 
2,690 combinations of supertypes. So this is 20 times more uh, diagnosis that we can cover than when we would have used synonyms only, which was a quite promising result. However, as you can see, um, generalization essentially leads to a loss of detail and uh, granularity, as we call it in SNOMED. Uh, and multiple supertypes might be confusing. So if some concept is explained by seven supertypes, maybe it, and uh, in the previous example, you can see that it doesn't really catch the, the important meaning of the, of the disorder. And there are also dependencies on terminology mappings on the SNOMED hierarchy and the modeling of defining relationships. And furthermore, the patient-friendly extension, of course. So the synonyms are supposed to be uh, patient-friendly and the definitions are supposed to uh, apply to the su subtypes of the supertypes. So our objective was to test the medical validity of the generalization method. Uh, we, we did this by identifying errors and unacceptable results. Uh, we wanted to do this to assess requirements to be able to implement the uh, list of acceptable uh, and correct clarifications into personal health record systems. Uh, in the problem list, particularly, where a patient can view his di diagnosis. So we took a random sample of 1,200 clarifications, uh, which covered each supertypes patient-friendly term and definition. So all 620 supertypes were covered in this sample, but, this, but um, from the, every supertype, a random diagnosis clarification was selected. And we also had um, different combinations of those 620 supertypes. Uh, we invited two raters from NICTIS, who both had a medical background and were involved in the SNOMED CT translation to Dutch. Um, we provide, first started with some instru instructions and then they completed the first 60 cases after which we had the discussion and improved um, the um, interpretation. So the and the raters, they uh, identified the errors and provided feedback so we could find out the types of errors that, um, that you get when you take this approach. And they also rated the acceptability, completeness, relevance, and clarity on a scale from one to five. So very unacceptable to very acceptable, for ex example. And um, the acceptability was about whether they would find it acceptable to implement in a, in a patient portal problem list uh, so that if they if they didn't agree on doing that, they would rate it as one or two, very unacceptable or unacceptable. So um, to the results, we found 12.7% of all clarifications contained errors, as identified by one or both of the raters, and 14.2% uh, um, were considered to be unacceptable. Um, and as you can see, um, both raters found half of the um, clarifications to be very acceptable. Uh, but if you look at um, the lowest score that was given to one clarification, then it was only one third of all the clarifications that was considered acceptable. And what we were most interested in was those clarifications that were considered unacceptable by, by one or both of the raters. So we, it, it is also, we found that there was um, a moderate inter-rater reliability only, be, and this is be, we think this is because the, um, it depends on the interpretation and the, the medical background of the rater, but also the, how critical they are about um, whether something is acceptable or not. So I'll, I'll go through some of the errors that we found to show um, some cases. Um, one type of error that we found was um, mapping error. And this case of the Duchenne female carrier, 
uh, was explained as a birth defect and a muscular dystrophy. However, um, a carrier doesn't necessarily have a manifesting form of a disease. So this uh, um, female carrier might not have uh, the muscular dystrophy while being a carrier. So we, we looked into how this result came about and we found that um, the carrier was mapped to the SNOMED code manifesting female carrier of X-linked muscular dystrophy, uh, which was a mapping error. Another type of error is uh, we found was in the, an error in the defining relationships of SNOMED CT. So a post-concussion syndrome was explained as a type of dementia. However, um, having a concussion, after having a concussion, you can also have um, fainting or be very tired, which is not necessarily the same as ha being having dementia. And we found out that this result uh, came about because post-concussion syndrome is modeled in SNOMED CT as, as a post-traumatic dementia. So this is quite unacceptable because um, this was considered to be unacceptable because it was um, yeah, it would worry somebody or, or be strange if to be if to say that they have dementia when they have not. Um, another type of um, errors that we found was um, that the definition is not applicable to all subtypes. So a recurrent nasopharyngeal carcinoma was um, clarified as a type of chronic illness. Um, with no prospect of full recovery and a relatively long duration of illness, often requiring long-term care. However, the Raters commented that this should not be considered a chronic disease because it's a recurrent disease. But in SNOMED CT, a recurrent disease is an intermittent disease and an intermittent disease is a chronic disease. So that's why our algorithm arrived at this result. So maybe this definition should not be um, chosen on that level. Another error were uh, in the synonyms of the extension. Uh, Braxton Hicks contractions was explained as a type of childbirth. Uh, however, this, the, the writers commented this is actually not a childbirth. These are just false labor pains, as it is always known, also uh, known, I mean. So the reason that this um, incorrect clarification was generated is because childbirth synonym for um, was given to the concept of labor finding. And the labor finding, of course, is not the same as a childbirth. Another type of error was uh, had to do with the algorithm splitting. So the algorithm splits a concept into several supertypes. And in this case of secondary malignant neoplasm of kidney, um, it was split into cancer in kidney and metastasis. However, um, it looks like that the, it was a metastasis from the kidney, while it's actually a metastasis from elsewhere. And similarly, um, the base of the tongue was uh, split into the throat, the mouth and the larynx, which makes it seems like uh, there are actually three types of cancer in three types of body parts. But this is because in SNOMED CT, the base of the tongue is part of these body, system, body parts. So that's where this algorithm um, didn't work very well. Uh, there are also incomplete cases. This is the most extreme one. Maybe if you read the medical letter and you see a mega karyotic, karyocystic thrombocytopenia, uh, you might not know what, what they're talking about. So that it's a type of disease might make sense to say as an explanation. But in the case of a burn, this, this makes no sense because um, it also, uh, we put a definition there that this is a deviation from the healthy state of the body or, or mind which manifests itself in symptoms and disorders. Makes no sense with uh, providing this as a clarification of burn. 
and there were 1,525 clarifications with disease as a supertype. So they, could, they can all be removed simply. There were some irrelevant results. So the pain of nose was provided with a definition of facial pain. Well, actually, pain of nose is already a patient-friendly term, so it needs no further clarification. Um, another case, which is uh, more bothering, it's um, that pancreatic disease, so pancreatic duct injury, but also 58 other pancreatic diseases, get the definition of pancreatic disease, which contains an example of pancreatic cancer. And this is... Um, this should be avoided because you should not worry a patient with pancreatic cancer when there, this is not really applicable to this concept. So we, sh we should, should avoid um, examples in a, in, a definition, in a text definition. There are also some unclear uh, clarifications, like the lumbar spinal stenosis with cauda equina compression. It was explained as a type of cauda equina syndrome. But uh, that doesn't say much more than the concept itself. So luckily, in the new versions of uh, the extension, cauda equina syndrome has a text definition as well, which makes it uh, much more accessible than this. But the post-surgical epistaxis is a good example as well, because it's a very complicated description uh, of a bleeding, a complication, a disease of heart and vessels, like a, it's like a cardiovascular disease, and the uh, disease of the nose with definitions. And um, actually, we're just looking at a, a nosebleed after surgery. So, however, there, the majority of all clarifications was considered acceptable. So there, this um, we just um, looked at all the problems, but there are also many good clarifications like Gangrenous tonsillitis, uh, clarified as an inflammation of the tonsils, or herpes zoster eridocyclitis as shingles neuropathy, eye infection, and inflammation. So th there are many uh, cases where the algorithm found um, result created acceptable um, clarifications without errors that were complete, relevant, and clear. So we found errors and unacceptable clarifications, and uh, most issues had to deal with uh, the underlying terminologies. But also there were some problems with the algorithm, um, but they can be resolved, we believe. And the majority of the clarifications was without errors and was considered to be acceptable. So this implies that we should um, remove and modify the unacceptable clarifications and we should um, validate the complete final set because um, these mapping errors or other issues, they, they might you cannot automatically prevent them. So we really have to do uh, terminology auditing. And also the, some of the findings we have, they might be important to improve um, these um, errors we have to do some further research into what went wrong there. So maybe SNOMED um, can be improved uh, with this result. And we also found um, that some synonyms should have a clarification and other clarifications were not necessarily necessary actually, like a disease needs no further uh, definition. There are some advantages. Um, to this approach because you can reuse patient-friendly terms and definitions to clarify many concepts uh, and it is very costly to develop a good clarification. So if you want to do this for all 25,000 diagnoses, it will take quite some time, uh, but in the end you'll be simplifying them anyway, so you'll leave out some details, so it makes sense to use the uh, generalization to simplify the, the concept. And another advantage is that when new concepts are introduced, that, they, that there already are supertypes for this concept to explain them. Uh, some disadvantages are the dependency on the underlying terminologies. 
So we will need to do uh, quality assurance and validation. Um, and and uh, some tricky part is that uh, you lose some of the semantic relationships between the supertypes because they are split into many supertypes. And sometimes the, it does, it, the result is not very helpful. So in further research, we are currently uh, planning an evaluation of the, this version uh, with some improvements uh, to implement it in a real-time patient portal. We will um, get a, use this as a baseline for further development. And uh, we will uh, measure the diagnosis that patients view on their problem list. And to, when they click on the info button, and they will be able to uh, rate the clarifications and provide feedback. The data will be extracted from the electronic health record automatically, or at least um, in anonymous form, I mean. So in, it will be aggregated without any patient information, and we will use the audit trail and diagnosis data for this purpose. So another um, uh, part of research that we are uh, planning and we are carrying out is um, to see um, up to what extent we can use more of the knowledge represented into SNOMED CT uh, to provide information to patients that are not present in the descriptions only. And especially with those concepts that are fully defined by SNOMED CT, um, you could, if you could explain those um, uh, relationships, then you could fully clarify a concept. For so this way you could um, clarify thousands of infections and cancers and reuse an explanation of uh, what the different body parts where they, they are located and maybe apply some generalization like saying the meninges is part of the brain or SARS-CoV is a coronavirus um, and use this to create dynamic clarifications that are post, in a sense, post-coordinated. So for example, a primary malignant neoplasm of pancreas is defined in SNOMED with its form and location. And you could uh, use this to generate a um, description of the concept that it is a malignant cancerous tumor originating in the pancreas. Similarly, a Q fever, Q fever myocarditis can be explained as an inflammation of the heart muscle caused by an infection with a bacteria called Coxiella burnetti. And this is information that is not contained in the textual description itself. So it can be, and you can, because it's dynamic, you can even adapt it maybe to the, to the language level that somebody has. So um, what we aim to implement these synonyms and definitions into a patient portal, which might look something like this, will look something like this. Um, so a patient can click on the info button and then get a description. Uh, if it's already available, the synonyms and definitions from the patient friendly extension, but also the generalization. So this Hemophilia can be, you can provide the generalization that it's a type of congenital or actually inborn condition and blood clotting disorder, and that it is hereditary. And uh, in further research, we will look into um, using the defining relationships to derive a clarification like this streptococcal ventriculitis which can be explained as an inflammation in the brain due to infection with a bacteria streptococcus. So in conclusion, um, generalization helps to increase the content coverage of um, patient-friendly extension because we were able to clarify 20 times more uh, diagnosis than using synonyms only. And we identified several problems with uh, diagnosis generalization, 
uh, but we think most of them can be addressed so we can resolve them um, and the majority was considered acceptable to be implemented into a patient portal another important result was uh, actually unexpected because we found a lot of input for uh, the quality improvement some input at least and this shows that you might use this method to do terminology auditing as well uh, in further research we will do an implementation for a baseline study and we will look at um, the, the right level of detail that we need to clarify a concept uh, and use the defining relationships to, to generate dynamic clarifications that are post-coordinated. So I want to thank the project members and uh, people that uh, have contributed to the, this, uh, this uh, research. And, uh, and I want to thank you all for your attention. So if you have any questions or suggestions, please uh, tell us. Hugo, you can see it, but I was smiling and clapping. That was absolutely awesome um, and so timely because we actually have uh, people who occasionally write in inquiring about patient friendly terms. So this was um, awesome work. Thank so you. I do see that we have some uh, questions in the um, little Q&A box. If you have questions, go ahead and answer them. Uh, go ahead and um, enter them and uh, we will start answering those. Um, so Camilla is asking, uh, oh, can I access the webinar recording afterwards? Uh, yes, um, I will be um, working with my comms team to get that available and ready either by the end of this week or beginning of next week. And I will make sure to email everyone who has registered um, and it'll be up on YouTube. So you'll be able to watch it at any time or share it with any of your colleagues who you think might be interested in this work. I think a lot of people will be interested. So go ahead and share that. Um, next question from um, John Schneider, uh, for the generalization algorithm, uh, sorry, for the generalization algorithm was an ideal depth level determined for uh, degeneralizing a concept. Example, the ideal level, it just skipped on me. Sorry, I just lost it. Where can I see the question or? It was, Oh, it just shifted to the bottom. Sorry. I think because people are liking it, so it's shifting around. For the generalization algorithm, was an ideal depth level determined for degeneralizing a concept? Example, the ideal level of the generalization is always N, super tight, concepts above a given concept. So you can actually see it, Hugo. If you click on the Q&A box at the bottom, you'll be able to see them. Um, okay, let me yeah. see. They, they flip around when people like it to upgrade it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, well, maybe I have to stop sharing or, oh, it's here. Yes, thanks. All right. Um, uh, no, we haven't looked into the ideal level of depth. Um, so we actually um, uh, just assume that all patient friendly, um, all, all concepts that are, have a term or definition in the patient friendly extension, that, they, that, that that's the ideal level. So this is something that we will um, address in further research. So to find um, how, what an ideal level is to explain something. So it's not necessarily has something to do with uh, um, number of super types, but it's just a, now it was the first one that you could find, but you can imagine that you can, you will, if you annotate the super, the concepts with, um, those that have a patient friendly term in a, on an accessible language level that you can generalize it to that level would be ideal. Great. Does that answer your question? Um, so they're all muted for now. So um, if John has a follow up, uh, we'll let him type that in. Um, and yeah, 
we have a number of questions, so I'll move on to the next one. Um, oh, another question from John. SNOMED is a multi-hierarchical, uh, multi-axle hierarchy, so you can have more than one ideal degeneralized concept. How does the algorithm handle multiple non-congruent concepts at the degeneralized de level? And what is a non-congruent concept? I'm not sure about uh, if I understand the question. Um, let me find John. John, um, I'm going to come over here and allow you to talk if you are available. So you can, let me find you in the list. So John, uh, I have given you permission to talk if you are available. Thanks, Susie. Okay, um, so an example of uh, a non-congruent concepts at the next level up would be any SNOMED concepts that contain a co-concurrent condition or basically a disorder with disorder type concept. Mm -hmm. How would those, how would the algorithm handle mm -hmm. that? Um, so that if those uh, also have super types, they would it would just um, look to the super types that have a patient friendly term. Okay. And so in, for example, do you mean a disorder caused by a secondary disorder or due to a secondary disorder or? You could have a, a due to situation uh, mm -hmm. or you could have a disorder caused by an organism or yeah. you could have something that's a co-concurrent that are two disorders occurring at the same time but aren't diagnostically related? Yeah, so in the case of um, um, of a due to sit, uh, relationship, the, now it doesn't have the uh, hierarchy um, association. So it, you can, but if you have the, if you have this approach that you use the defining relationship, you can easily resolve this. So you could say you, all the diagnoses that are due to uh, diabetes mellitus, for instance, uh, you can explain them separately and say um, that uh, one that certain diagnosis is due to diabetes mellitus, and then provide uh, explanation of di diabetes mellitus. But uh, but it doesn't really uh, address it now because it just looks into the hierarchy, and it finds the the nearest supertypes. It's interesting because um, West Coast Informatics script for generating the transitive closure includes a depth level. And that's why I wondered if you were using a, a depth level to determine your ideal level of degeneralization. Yeah, so we, we, do, we are not using that and just generalize to the nearest um, super type. Um, maybe okay. there's a, I can show it here that, um, so here you just uh, look up, you traverse the hierarchy um, in all directions, upwards, and then uh, you find those two concepts that are actually all these concepts are supertypes, but you just take the nearest one. So you leave out the supertypes of supertypes. That's, that's the only thing the algorithm does. Okay, thank you. Thank you too, but it's interesting to look into. I would be um, interesting, interested to look, uh, hear more about your approach. So I think um, uh, very uh, close to this inquiry, uh, Dr. Jim Case is asking, how are the definitions generated? Uh, the definitions, they were added to the patient-friendly extension uh, by SNOMED CT. So, um, the, so as you can see, um, the artery here at the pawn, the green pawn, it has the text. It has a description, which it, this is just a synonym that can be preferred or it can be acceptable. So there can be m multiple synonyms that are patient friendly. Uh, but it also has a text definition. And they uh, uh, come from, the from a thesaurus, a Dutch thesaurus of uh, care and well-being. Uh, and currently they're um, being added more that are developed with other organizations that are working together with NICTIS. Uh, and, and we um, 
to provide these definitions and we concatenate the, them together into a clarification in this um, generalization approach. Great, thank you. And um, Jim, if you have a follow-up, go ahead and raise your hand and um, I will uh, pick you up in the uh, participant list. Um, looks like we have a couple of thumbs up uh, from Yale's comment who says important work, way to go. So kudos, Hugo. Thank you. Um, and um, Charles Gutteridge says, ah, I was wondering this as well. Do you think you should have some lay people check the outputs before you try your implementation? Yes, that's a, a good a good question. Um, and this is what is currently being done with um, um, the, the new um, text definitions that have been added, that are going to be added to the Netherlands patient friendly extension. Uh, but but it is a good idea to to check it in advance. Mm -hmm. uh, but an advantage uh, of not using the patients is that they uh, they are the experts on their own um, experience, and um, so a lay, lay person is not necessarily the same um, would re respond the same to this. But um, yeah. So maybe it's not necessary, but I think it's a good, uh, good advice. Yeah. Great, thank you. And um, next uh, from Yang, uh, Dr. Gao, uh, he says, great presentation. Looking forward to seeing the model would be utilized for clarification and definition in the future. Thank you. Um, and uh, another one from John. Uh, so this is really interesting presentation because both the LOINC and CPT code systems provide consumer friendly names as part of their distribution packages. Can this algorithm be applied to any terminology that has an underlying multi hierarch high multi axle hierarchy? I always want to say multi <laughs> hierarchy, multi axle yeah. hierarchy. Yes, um, I think this definitely can be applied to those other um, systems that uh, are multi-axial. Um, and you will run into the same issues probably. So the, particularly the results of our uh, validation study are interesting to consider. Um, but um, yeah, of course you would need to support the import of those terminologies and uh, uh, make something to traverse their hierarchies, which we haven't um, in the current application, but you could easily add that, yeah. Thanks for your question. Great. Uh, let me just do a quick little time check. Okay, so we have a couple more questions and we have a little bit more time, so we'll try to get through these. Um, Mark de Graal asks, from examples in the presentation, it appears that most of the erratic patient-friendly translations are errors in SNOMED itself i.e. erratic relationships or wrong Dutch translations and parent concepts. Is that right? Or are the majority of wrong generated patient-friendly definitions due to shortcomings in your al algorithm? Yeah, and that's, um, um, uh, there were some of the, of the errors there, we think that they might have to deal with, um, that they do have to deal with uh, SNOMED modeling or mapping between the diagnosed thesaurus and SNOMED. Uh, but they are not the majority. I think we're still uh, working on processing the total results, and so you can you will be able to find them in the forthcoming paper on the topic. Um, so definitely, sometimes it's it's not either way or either one of them, or because it can be uh, both. That um, for the basis of the tongue, for instance, is part of the mouth and the throat in SNOMED CT. Um, so it's part of the algorithm that that sense, but there. Yeah. So, yeah, I think. Uh, Sorry, I wasn't sure if I cut you off. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, Hannah Ruth uh, Valeri says always have interest with SNOMED, if only my hospital will know how great this works. Yes, and uh, Hannah, if you uh, wanted some uh, 
information that you can bring back to your hospital, let us know. Contact us, info at snomed.org, and we can definitely help get you some information that maybe will help uh, some of the hospital leadership. So, oh, and uh, final question in the box. Uh, did the algorithm perform better or worse if only concepts with a defined status were used as opposed to using both primitive and defined concepts? Meaning, was the validation error rate higher for primitive concepts? Yes, um, that's a good question. We haven't uh, looked into this uh, yet, but we did find um, uh, that uh, I think especially if you would use the other approach with uh, defi defining relationships, um, that you could have a much lower error rate and much better clarifications than just um, generalizing them to their super types. Um, but we we doing some um, sub analysis for the amount of super types and for um, so. But these uh, results are pending, so you will find out more in the in the forthcoming paper on the topic. Oh, please do let us know when that uh, paper is published, Hugo. Sure. Okay, great. Um, well, thank you. Thank you everyone for attending and thank you, Hugo, for that excellent presentation. Clearly from all the questions that we had um, and I see a number of emails already coming in uh, to my inbox. So this was clearly a very um, interesting topic for many. Um, so thank you for your work. Yeah, thank you very much too for the moderation and for all the questions. Absolutely. And if anyone has any follow-up um, questions for um, myself regarding anything uh, SNOMED CT or SNOMED International, the upcoming um, or the open call for abstracts, um, please email me. My email, direct email is on the, um, uh, is being shown right now, as well as the general SNOMED International info uh, web portal. And um, thank you again, Hugo. If you have any questions for Hugo, you can email me and I will get um, that over to him as well. So thank you all for attending and uh, hope to see you next month or at other SNOMED CT uh, online events. Thank you, have a good one. Thank you. Thank you.